Hi, my name is Tracy Cornelius. I'd like to welcome you to Get Creative with Tracy. Today's tutorial is going to be on how to make this paper mug. So first of all, we're going to take a sheet of A4 and then taking our stamping trimmer, we're going to leave the um, width of the paper and then we're going to cut it to four and a half inches. So you'll be able to get two basically out of a sheet of A4. So might as well cut the other one while we're here. So four and a half inches. And then for the handle, you need to cut um, a one inch strip by four and a half inches. So again, I'm just going to do both of those. So then I've got enough to make two mugs. So four and a half inches. So here's our first sheet. So like I said, A4 and then just go to four and a half inches or if you're um, American you can do it by eight and a quarter inches and four and a half inches. <laughs> now the next step I'm going to do is start doing my scoring and this is purely because of the design that I've got. We're actually using the Mosaic Madness stamp set which is from the new annual catalogue for 2013-2014. It's a gorgeous set and it just fits this project perfectly. So first of all I need to score the bottom section of our mug. So just putting your piece of paper on in this position and then score at one and a half inches. And the reason for doing that is because now we can see our score line. And as I want to create the border pattern that's going around, that gives me an indication of where I need to stamp on the bottom. So I'm going to be using stays on. You can use your basic black ink, but for quickness for the video, and just ink up my stamp, making sure that I go all the way along. Now stays on does dry out really quickly, so do make sure that you put the little plastic bit back on. And then making sure that my paper is straight on my grid paper. I'm just going to eyeball this one. You could use your stamp and jig And then repeat the process. So ink it up again. And then go to the same to the other side. I might get in the way a little bit here because I need to be looking down on it. I've smudged mine a little bit. Always happens when you're videoing. But then repeat the process at the top as well. So just again looking down so that you can line it up. Ink up the stamp again. And then go across. Okay, so now I've got my border pattern and now I can score the rest of the lines. If you weren't doing this particular pattern, you could just go ahead and do all the storing, scoring at once. So, just as a reminder, put this in the portrait position and scored it um, at an inch and a half. And again, scoring onto the back, put it landscape and then you want to score it at every inch. So you go going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. So literally every inch right the way to the end. And then this little section at the end is going to be our little flap that we can adhere down. So turning over, this is now perfect to be able to stamp and this gives me a guide. So I've already gone ahead 
and I've um, inked up my stamps and positioned them um, with the stamp hammer jig. Now I've layered two stamps onto one block and that's purely because I'm using the stamp hammer jig anyway for positioning. So it just makes it easier to be able to stamp this going through. But I'll just show you. So for the stamp hammer jig, you're positioning it right the way onto the um, the set T, ink up your stamp, and then make sure that it sits flush inside, and then stamp down onto your imaging sheet. And then for this, because I'm using more than one stamp, I just turned it 90 degrees, flipped my stamp over and did exactly the same thing. But what that now means is that I can position this onto my scored sheet I can ink up my stamp just making sure that I've got that all the way around put in my T and then stamp down and now I've got that perfectly in position for each one and then I'm just going to repeat the process and as I said, because I've got this one, and I've got two on one, just to flip it over, ink up the stamp again, just again checking, I think I need to re-ink my stays on pad, and go down. And then you want to do this all the way um, along. But to save time, I've already gone ahead and done that with this sheet here. So... I just used every little section as an indication as where I can stamp. The next stage after that is to do some cutting. So as I said, the bit, the quarter inch part at the end is going to be your flap for adhering. So you want to remove the bottom section. So cut along the score line all the way up to the horizontal score line and just remove that section. And then all you're going to do is cut through every score line all the way up to the horizontal. And then that's going to be, this is going to be the bottom, so that you can shake the mug and also make sure that it stays really sturdy. And really you do need to use sticky strip for this. You could use Tombow, but you will have to hold it into place quite a bit. So these are bits are going to be our um, bottom sections. So all you would do now is make sure that you fold it all over. Now you can use your bone folder, but for quickness for the video, just folding these sections over. And I also do the same for the flaps, just because it makes it easier. And it means that I can use the score lines to definitely make sure that it's all straight. But again, I've already gone ahead and done another one. And I've added the sticky strip. So I've added the sticky strip to our little quarter inch section. So I can now remove that and adhere that together. So all you're going to do is line up the sides and line it up with the score mark. And then again down the bottom. And just put that into place. I then find it easier to bend out all my little tabs. And what you want to do is put a sticky strip onto four of them on both sides. Okay. Once you've done that, we're going to adhere them together. So I'm just going to take this one, remove the backing strip from the sticky tape all the way around. And taking the opposite side, I'm going to push that down. Now you will need to make sure that you're trying to keep this in shape as much as possible. So don't try pushing it in. Just let it relax there and then match up the other side. Okay, so that's now adhered down and we've already got a piece of sticky strip on the top for our next section. So now I'm going to do opposite sides again. Again, making sure that I keep this one fairly loose, pop that down. I'm using this one as a guide to make sure that I'm not pushing it out of shape. Then removing the sticky strip, lining it up again and then putting it into position. And you want to keep doing that all the way around. Now the last piece is fairly important as to how you stick it because you want to make sure that you haven't got sticky strip 
on the top. So this time I'm going to remove my sticky strip. And put the sticky section down first and then taking the last piece just putting it over the top and then I can press down and press inside firmly and then that's made the basis of our little paper cup which is uber cute absolutely love these and they're so easy to do as well so the next section is our handle so as you remember we had a strip and it was one and a half inches wide by four and a half inches long I've already gone ahead and stamped this, um, but just to give you an indication, you could use your um, stamp and majig again, but really for this one, I'm just going to eyeball it. So, inking up my stamp and then just putting it down, and you want to do that all the way along for your handle. Once you've done that, you need to put sticky strip. And the rule of thumb for this one is you're going to do it at opposite ends on opposite sides. So by that, I mean we're going to go at the top on the front and then the bottom at the back. Remove the sticky strip. And then I always do it on the side um, that has been stuck. And just go a little way down. If you've done a border, that's a really good indication. So just go to the top of that, try to make sure it's as straight as possible and adhere that into place and then remove the other section of backing it's always so static <laughs> and then taking it, and I tend to pop mine right the way down the bottom just because then it's easier if you want to have more of a curve to your handle then you could go slightly further up now if you wanted to you can do a thinner handle but to be fair it depends what you put inside of it. Because I've got the inch, it's really quite sturdy, so I can have something quite heavy in here and it's going to hold really well. Now, of course, you could also use our designer series paper. This is the modern medley, so this is fantastic, especially if you do want to do a male one, um, but it looks really cute. And then the added bonus of that is that because it's double sided, so you've got it nicely decorated on the inside as well. So there you have it. There's our little really cute paper cups ready for you to fill with whatever you want to put them on. Do check out the other blog uh, posts that I have on my website as well as the other videos. Thanks for stopping by and please do feel free to leave a comment. Thanks, bye!